I appreciate you coming. Thank you having me. Taking the time to do this. I want to talk to you about several different things. First of all, I want to find out a little bit about where you're from. Mm. Okay. Okay. Because you told me some things before yep. that were very interesting. Yep. So where you where do you hail from? That, that's that's an interesting question, right? I'm, I'm I consider myself a Californian. Okay. Right. Like so, I grew up partially there, but I also have very deep roots in um, East Texas. So I spent a good amount of time there, and that represents East Texas to. Uh, what we call it, West Louisiana. That stretch represents the homestead for my father. And then I haven't, while well, I haven't lived there, my mother's from the Philippines, from Cebu. Okay. So you know, I'm I'm an amalgamation of, of a lot of places. I, I think I, I do think of myself as a Californian, though. So I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, but lucky enough, I grew up in a space where I could be all of that, right? right. Do, you do you have siblings? I got a, one younger sister. Yeah, How many lives years? in the Bay Area. One, one year older? Uh, a younger, she's five years younger. Five years younger than you. Exactly. Are you guys close? We're very close. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's we're, good. Very, we're really close. We're wow. Really close. wow. Yeah, yeah. So now I know that you have two kids. You have, yep. you have don't, 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 don't tell me, because I have, no, see, now that we're doing this, <laughs> they, they, don't, don't say that, <laughs> because I know Zach. Yep. Zachary. Yeah. And my first one. Every time I see him, wait, Noah. There it is. There Noah it is. and Zachary. That's right. The boys. And Noah's your twin, 100%. Yeah, yeah. And then Zach probably looks more like his mom, right? Zach is, is, is his, she looks, he looks almost exactly like one of her younger brothers. Isn't that interesting? It is interesting. Isn't it is, that interesting? It is interesting. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, so what do you, what do, you do in Japan? What brought you here, first of all? Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm of the, the age that... Um, when I was coming into adulthood and trying to figure out what I was going to do in the world and where I wanted to be and how the world looked, right, um, Japan was at its ascendance in terms of uh, economics, the 80s, okay. right? And it, my, my connection to multiple places, Philippines, California, Texas, a little bit of always kind of back and forth, I, I've always been pretty comfortable looking at someplace that was far off, right? Okay. And so I, I took an interest in Japan as an undergrad at that time because if you had any interest in international affairs, mm -hmm. Japan was the was one of those countries that was really you know in focus in terms of academic and commercial and all of that, right? You know, you think mid '80s, right, mm -hmm. when they were buying up all of the states supposedly. Right. Right. So that was that was my, my interest in Japan came from that, and I was one of the people. I had no idea what I was going to do career wise. Had you ever I, been to the Philippines? I had been to the Philippines, and so. My, my interest, uh, my, my, my okay. true interest, how, how I came to uh, be intrigued by Japan was the fact that I had been to the Philippines. And at that time in the mid 80s, I was struck by the contrast of, and the, and the question of, out of the non, all the sort of non Western countries and ang non Anglo countries, how is it that Japan post World War II had achieved so much economic success? Okay. Right, and particularly if you think of it as a subgroup, and and you could, in a way, you could contrast that with the Philippines, where you know my first entree outside of the states was, you know, a, a place that can be shocking if you know if you if you yeah, if you've right, never yeah. been exposed to it, right? Anything outside. And so I've always had that. I've always had that in the back of my mind as a but reference. But your study, point. your study in college was what? Um, political economy. So I studied. Um, so that's why you had that kind of interest. Correct. And so and I and I studied the economic development of Northeast Asia, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, okay. and primarily Japan. But you know, I, I had some exposure to those other countries as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But the question that drove it was, why? How is it that when we look at all these effectively non-Western countries, all the developing world, all the Asian world, all the Africa and Latin America, that Japan is is just a step ahead in terms of. Uh, and, and, um, and at that point, it was, I was thinking just in terms of economic development, mm -hmm. or what you think of in terms of, you know, rankings in the world economically at okay. that time. And that's when, it, you know, Japan was at its ascendancy, so it kind of came together that way for me. Okay, and yeah. then when, so when was your first visit here? My you, first visit, interest. in, interestingly, you know, so I did an undergrad, studied, uh, as I mentioned, political economy, mm -hmm. focused on Japan, Korea, and, and Taiwan. It got a bit of exposure to the language. Did some intensive language stuff, but you know how that is. You just yeah. kind of toying with it until you until. And so I worked for a few years in the states uh, in a think tank in Berkeley around Japan related stuff. Okay. And then I told myself, well, if I if I want to try to figure this out, do something, I got to go get some exposures in the language. Mm -hmm. And so I came. I was twenty. How old was I? Let me think. I was about twenty six. I was twenty. I was about. 
26? Yeah, it was about 26. What year was that? That was 1994. 1994. That was 1994. Right. And um, so I came over on the JET program. Like a lot of, which, you know, generationally, it was, you know, you, you look at folks that are currently, ha here are foreigners, a lot of them who are in Japan who've made careers, mm -hmm. those who've gone back and have had connections with Japan. There's a whole generation of us who, mm -hmm. Who, who took that experience and, you know, um, you know, thankfully had the opportunity to kind of make something of it, mm -hmm. out, springboard out of it. So, so I did that. I was in Fukuoka for four years mm -hmm. and loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, I look back on it. I'm glad I wasn't in a place like Tokyo. I'm glad you I wasn't. You wouldn't have learned English. Just, oh, you yeah. learned Japanese. Correct. Right. Exactly. Right. And, and, you know, and so that was a great, great experience. And you were there for what, two years? I was there for three years. Three years? Three years. Wow. Yeah, three years in Fukuoka. Well, Fukuoka City and then, and then in the surrounding areas, right? Okay. It was then, great. then you went back to the States. Then I went back to the States and went to graduate school okay. uh, and did more kind of advanced stuff in international affairs, mm -hmm. economics, finance, a bit more, bit more Japanese. Mm -hmm. And then I got into, I guess you would say, what, what is my career, which is, you know, consulting, uh, finance, international tax. I'm in that space, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of spanning between the accounting firm world and the financial services world. Mm -hmm. Got into that in, let's say, maybe 1999 got into that world, have been on that, you know, been doing the that. The same company? That, not, not the same company. I've, I've, I've spent time at a few different places, right. but kind of all in the same area, you know what okay, I mean, right. from a subject matter yeah. area, right? So I've taken that skill set and kind of just kind of tried to, you know, follow the path that it leads to in terms of career opportunities. Right. How, did, how did you get back to Japan? Well, uh, graduate school, um, finished there, lived for a few years in L.A., Mm -hmm. And again, this was that, that entry into, into professional services, the accounting firm right. world. And I was servicing, part of what I was doing, I was helping to service um, Japanese multinationals, mm -hmm. um, you know, Los Angeles headquarters and things like that. So I was, you know, using the language, using this new skill set to service that there. Right? How did that go? Was it... Was it it was, it was, you know, it was good. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, I was, I mean, at that point, I was new to a, a um, I would say, an area of expertise. So I was just soaking up mm -hmm. what I could do. And then I was trying to, I was providing a communication bridge a lot of the times between okay. what you think of the more experienced professionals right. and partners and things like right. that and these clients. So it was a great, and, and, and I had a, a bit of a different skill set that gave me a little bit of leverage. The language, right? Yeah, okay. right? And so I enjoyed it, right? Um, I enjoyed my time in Southern California. And, and the Japanese were really receptive to having you as a translator sometimes? I think, I think they were receptive to having somebody there that could, you know, had an appreciation for, um, for the language, mm -hmm. the business culture, and who also was, you know, they could see I was also moving along this path to become an expert in this technical space. So I was right. kind of an amalgamation of that. Okay. And um, so that, that part was, it was great, it was mm -hmm. great. But that effectively, you know, led to an opportunity with the same firm to come over to Tokyo. Okay. Right, and so then. That's the, not who you're with now. But that's not who I was with okay. now, but it was, okay. yeah, at the time, they were, you know, it was always kind of in the back, they said, look, you know, we need you to get you some experience, we need you to know what you're doing, but we think you're, you would be a great person for one of the people that um, career track wise, you know, certain people who just stay in the same city and they, 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 they become well known and deep in that city. Other folks just go out and travel around and right, right. service the, you know, the globe and all that. And they, they, I was fortunate enough to kind of be in that camp right. within that world. And I came across, and I think we met, I met you. When you were still with that at the company. With that, yeah, the first yeah, no. time we met was probably an ACCJ related matter. Oh, okay. I was, was, want to say it I was, was here at the old at the old club. What year was that? Oh man, two thousand something. Yeah, it was like let's call it two thousand three, two thousand. That's when I was president. Yeah, yeah. so it was around, it was in that period. I kind of remember you because it was probably I think there were three black people there, you and another black guy. Yeah, yeah, that's about. right. I can't remember that. Yeah, yeah. yes, and I came right over to you guys. Yeah. and you spoke for a second. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to, right. you got to greet, right? That's you right. Know. <laughs> you got to greet. You got to at least, you got to, you got to acknowledge. Exactly. <laughs> Especially if you're in my space. Exactly. <laughs> you got to, you know, right. I, I come up the same way. It's like, you know, the old school. It's you like, hey, you, you better go over there and say, at least say, say, say something. Acknowledge Introduce it yourself and, yeah. and, and say hello and make yourself. And I think that was probably our first. That's right. Our and, first if, and if I think, if I could, if I get it correct, I have a feeling it was an inter intercontinental It hotel. might have been. It might have been. And it we had been. a gathering there. It was one of my gatherings there, and I was yep. speaking to everyone, and you guys were there, and you guys had people you were yep. talking to. Yep. And yeah, and it make, and that makes sense because the office of the firm I worked with was two offices over, was From two buildings company. over. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it probably was. It yeah. probably was. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So so that yeah. that brought me you back. Brought that all back. I forgot all about that. Yeah. 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 So that brought me back, and I you know I haven't I haven't lived in the states. I, I, did a year outside of Japan, kind of in between there. What is, what is this? This is 2021. Right. That was 2002 when I came back. So I did one year outside of Japan during this 19-year period. So you went back to the States? I went to London. Oh, you went to London? For one year during that As you're, While you were single? Well, still single? I was still single. That's still right. Single, okay, yeah, right, right, yeah okay. exactly. That was yeah. during my uh, Lehman, Lehman Brothers days. Okay. Yeah. So wow. I did and you got on them just in time, didn't you? No, I was there. When it happened? I was there for the whole ride. I was wait, 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 wait. So you went to London with Lehman Brothers, then you came back Well, to I, Japan? I, I joined Lehman, well, I, maybe back up. So I, I came across with the, with the accounting firm okay. here and uh, when we met, and it was called 2003. Worked for okay. them for a few years, and then I joined Lehman Brothers here. Okay. And worked here for a few years. Under Akio, with under... Um, I interviewed him. I mean, I had yes. him on the podcast. Yeah, probably he so. He was the president. At the time... He's the one that closed down Lehman here. Oh, he might have been... He when they were walking out of Rapungi Hills with their bag. Yeah. He I, was, I, I worked under the regional the regional CEO. Okay, okay. So I wasn't, I wasn't doing just Japan-related stuff. I was doing... Effectively doing global related, okay. global stuff, but I was in the regional headquarters. Right. Right. But, but yeah, so I was there. And then, and then the last year... They had pressed me. They, they wanted me to move to New York because it was a global role. And they were like, can you come? And I was like, um, I don't really want to move to New York. <laughs> and they, they finally, they said, well, look, you know, we need you to go to, 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 to London at least, right? And so, I, you know, I did a, I was willing to do a few years. I was always going to come back this, this, right. to this part of the world. But it, I, th I figured it would be a good opportunity. And so I was only in London the last year of Lehman. So the, I moved over in early, uh, basically late 2007, right, and September 2008, Bingo. it went under. So I did literally a full year, and that's probably why you never noticed, because right. I was, I, didn't notice, no. I, was gone, I was literally, yeah. and, I, and I was back and forth quite a bit during that year. Did well. you get a job right away? I, went, I immediately went back to the accounting world. Okay. Yes, so I was fortunate. I was, yeah. you know, very fortunate in that yeah, sense. Yeah, tell me about it. Right, yeah. right, so. Wow. Yeah. So, so is that why you why you ended up where you are now? That is that's that's yes exactly exactly that's okay. it yeah. So Lehman failed. I, I said look you know I had an opportunity maybe to stay in the banking world, but at that point in time no one knew what the banking world would be and that's look right. like and and I had already spent prior to Lehman I had spent let's call it six years in the in the big four accounting world and it's like well that's a familiar world. Um, it is. You know, it's an area that, that, that probably long term, you know, I can I can make a living at and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, I, I, I can go back to sort of being on a track that was that would put you towards the hopefully towards the top of that that field. Right. And so I went back to that to that mm -hmm. world. And, and I've been back in that now for what since 08. Right. With so we've 13 years. Yeah. 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 Deloitte and Touche. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what, what's your title? Then? So I'm a partner. And I'm in the business. You made year. partner. I'm a partner. You when did you make partner? Uh, did you put the? I didn't see that ago? posted anywhere. Did you post it? Well, I mean, you know. What do you mean? You know what? I mean, <laughs> that's a big deal, man. You're a partner. I just. At the but at the same, I mean, you know, it's one of those things, right? I mean, I, I, I I'm fortunate that um, one of the benefits of, of of Lehman. I mean, everybody knows it failed, right? I would say this: the best business experience I ever had, o bad. overall. Overall, because you learn the most from the from the heart, from the from the, that's from the hard times. That's true. You know, you that's learn true. the most from that, and the people were great. I, I absolutely love the people, but the benefit of it is that all those people have gone out into other firms, and uh, and and it's like you know, it's the equivalent of, of having gone to war with with each other. As soon as you run into a Lehman person, if they know you're an old Lehman person, 
you have the connection. Right away. Right. And so for me now being back in the accounting world, that has been very, very helpful because I can look across the entire sector, financial services world and, and outside of it, and I have a network of ex-colleagues who they're, they're on their career trajectories as well. So it's been, it served me well. And yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a partner, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, seven years ago. Maybe? Go ahead. I've been for a while. Well, congratulations. Thank you. A belated Thank you. congratulations. Thank you. Man. Yeah. Look at yeah. you. Yeah. All right. So you plan on, how long do you see yourself staying in Japan? Uh, you know, I, I don't have a time frame for mm -hmm. uh, returning to the States. Right. Okay. I, I, I see this as home. Okay. at this stage right now is that to say I would never go back I wouldn't I would never close. say never yeah right <laughs> but 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 I, I don't have an immediate sort of plan to, to do that and, mm -hmm. and you know my wife is Japanese my my sons I want them to have the best of both worlds of course mm -hmm. but we're grounded here at this point in mm -hmm. our lives so I, I think I think we're gonna be here for the foreseeable since future. you're talking about kids mm -hmm. your sons mm -hmm. I'm interested because it's something I want to start talking about a little bit more mm. as I do more of these podcasts. How do you parent as an inter, interracial, intercultural family yep. where you have certain values you grew up with and your wife has certain values? Yep. You have two boys. How has it been for you? Now, your oldest son right now, how old is Noah? Noah's eight. Eight. And, the and Zach is, is three. Three. Yeah. Wow, he's big for three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the kid was like seven years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Zach, so 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 Noah's eight, yeah. and Zach is three. Yeah. So, how do you find parenting? Well, I mean, uh, the first thing is, you know, because also say, your wife is working too. Correct. We both work. Right. Right. She's in finance as well. She's right? in finance. We, we, yes. Yeah, she's in finance as well. So, do you have a nanny or someone? We do have somebody that helps us. Okay. Yes. Yes, and we, and we we love her to death. And, and the irony of it is, you know, she's. Uh, Filipino older woman, right? So she is. Um, she's kind of like what we call her, the the boys local Lola. Lola, Lola. Lola is you know. Grandma Can you speak any Tagalog? I speak a little bit of Cebuano, but not. Uh -huh. I know I speak more Japanese than, okay. I, do, than I do that. I, I definitely can understand it, right? But but I I, I always respond to English. That's nice. Oh, that's good. But, but but so we do have help. But okay. the, the thing that's interesting is you know because I myself grew up in that kind of a house. Which that kind of that house? That kind of right? house that was bicultural. Okay. Right? That's Bicultural right. and bilingual. That's right, that's right, yeah. that's right, that's right. So it's, it's very natural to me, right, in that sense. Okay. Right? Um, in, the, in the sense that, you know, I've always, you know, the, the, the parents sort of navigating those, those sort of, you know, at, at the base of it, and, and I found this for my parents as well, and I think, me, me, you know, you typically are going to be, if, if you're fortunate enough to marry somebody who you really, really, um, uh, how would you say, have, have gotten to know before you get married. And you're very likely to, to pick somebody who, with whom you have certain core values. Yeah, I've built them up over that time. At Correct, least. As, or as, as part of that relationship building process. That That's you have a consensus on that. So the core of it, I'm not worried about. Because you already have that set up. Because I know that. Do you mind, how many years did you guys know each other? <laughs> we did right. it. Five years, six years. Okay, that's a good so, time. Long time. So you knew, so you knew. Yeah, and exactly. you went through who's going to win this battle, that battle, and who's going to exactly. got you. So, so that, that part but is that's still But that's still not parenting. That it, part's set up for you, right. But it gives you, it gives us a baseline for the things that we're, you know, she knows certain things about me, I know certain things about her in terms of um, what we both expect. The other thing, and, 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 and I guess what I'm getting at is I tend to focus probably on areas that we share I try to find, and I'm, you know, that's maybe my personality too. Consensus. Where is the consensus? I can, I pick up on that pretty early, right? And then, you know, if I had to say three or four things that are probably um, core to who I am, that I, I really am trying to make sure my boys appreciate. The first is, you know. While I'm, and similar to you, while, 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 like I said, I call myself a Californian, and I am, I'm very much grounded in the way my grandparents impacted me in a Which little Which ones? My, uh, my father. My okay, father, okay. In a little town called Beaumont, Texas. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine exactly. My father's from Louisiana. Yes, so, right yeah. on the border there. Very clear. So, you, you, you know, and, and, and so the first thing is that the, when I've always had an appreciation for... I guess you say the level of respect, the level of um, the sense of community, 
that is core to who I am. And, you know, while we're, it's funny, while we are not in the same sort of family village that I grew up in, mm-hmm. you know, we've managed to surround ourselves. And, and this is, we've talked about this generationally, those, you know, bicultural families, bicultural kids here. We've managed to surround ourselves with a group of friends who look a lot like us. Isn't that interesting? That's good. Right? So their first order of sort of the village are those people. And they know them, yeah. And they know them, they know them well, right? Yeah. So, so we have, you know, those are the things that, that really, that's one. The other is, I think, around education, right? And education, you know, I think the, the, the sort of rote nature of the way education is, is dealt with here is important. There's, there's right. definitely need that. I'm about fostering learning and interest so that you will want to learn mm-hmm. your entire life. Life, thank you. Not just for a piece of paper and exactly. then think you're finished. Exactly. exactly. And that's probably where, you know, well, I, don't, I don't think we differ. Hopefully, we complement each other in that sense, right. right? Because she is very much, you know, we got to get through this, right? And and and, I, and we have to be that way. We all, both of us do. Mm-hmm. I'm very much about um, if you want to, re- if you want me to read to you until you're 14 years old, I'll read to you until you're 14 years old. If you want exposure to something, we'll go find out about it, right? So I, you know, I'm on that journey, trying to be on that journey of learning with them. So that's probably the thing, and then, and then, and then my wife, fortunately, um, is she's um, while well, she's from um, she's from Ehime, mm-hmm. which is you know Ehime, not Tokyo, yes. mm-hmm. which is very different, right? But she also you know at a very young age she went and spent four or five years on, on her own going to college in Canada. That's why her English is so good. That's yes. why her English is good. That's why yes. she so she has a perspective having at those very formative years gone out and really challenged herself in a way that I think is, you know, you know, I appreciate that about her, right? I don't I probably don't tell her enough that I do, but I really You don't you don't make her head big. I, I appreciate <laughs> I really appreciate that about her, right? Do you do you have your kids in Japanese school now? Cur- currently, yes. So so um, our youngest, um, he's in regular Japanese Hoi Right. And Noah went through, so nursery, right? So Noah went to regular Japanese nursery. And then we put him into the elementary school near our house. My, 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 again, I mean, I, I know that that's not the final, you know, path for him. Mm-hmm. But I think at this stage, that sense of security, that sense of confidence, that, that feeling of being a part of something and being in a, in a place where, you know, I know people and I can learn. And, and I, that, that, to me, was more important than sort of stepping into... The bigger world at mm. at this at this at the first grade or second grade level. Mm-hmm. He, he's going to switch over to international school soon. So, um, so but what grade yeah. is he in? Why? Why? He's in. He's going into third grade. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, it's just a question of when, right? And and mm-hmm. how. And so, you know, I, I don't. I mean, I, I'm I'm fortunate that you know, there's a lot of folks like you and your your family mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. other folks who. Who've done it before us? Kind of works, yeah. yeah, you know, so it's kind of like, well, you know, we want to we, we want to make sure he kind of gets on a track that is longer longer term what we want. Right. But I think the, these three years in, in Japanese elementary school will be invaluable to him over. over well, that's for sure. His life, yeah, right? yeah. What I did, mine was a little different. I don't know if I'm put that in there, but mm-hmm. yeah, I kept them in longer, mm-hmm. yeah. and then took them out after that. Okay. And put them in international school after that. Right. But how do you speak to them at home? Do you use well, both languages? Right now, well, we use English at home. I mean, that's because... Both you us, and your wife? Both of us, yeah. So all the so the kids have the to... The majority of okay. them. I mean, you know, so they're very... So when they ask, they never they never ask her in Japanese. No, they will. They'll, 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 they'll go into, you know, and we don't force the English upon them okay. in that way. But um, we use English... Um, they both, they, Noah at least has a very, very rigorous English study program, mm. a weekly basis, mm. you know, very significant. That's mm. keeping him on track with his peers. Right. Right. Um, so, so, and, and, and who knows, when he switches to international school, we might switch over. We might okay. switch to Japanese. Okay. Right at home. Right. Tell me about discipline. So, like, let's say that Noah, because he's the oldest and stuff, mm-hmm. how do you find your, what do you, do you use Physical discipline? Do you use verbal discipline? Yeah. Do you use what? What kind of discipline do you use? I think did you I, use for Noah? Because he was your first. Yeah, I think with Noah so far, we haven't. I haven't used really physical discipline, I, mm-hmm. other than on, on the occasion to sit him somewhere and, okay. you know, but most of it is verbal, and okay. most of it is is around. I would say, 
reinforcing messages. We've been forcing with him. He's not. He, he's he's a pretty mild mannered kid. He he's not. He's not. He's, he's not, not exactly. He's not an outlier. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We don't know what we go. Exactly. 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 You say okay. Yeah. You got. You did him that way, but I'm. Not, yeah. I'm not playing this. Yeah. I, I, I wish I could. In some to a certain degree, I wish I could do. Um, this gets back to the Beaumont, Texas thing. Yeah. I wish I could do what my grandparents used to do when we were growing up. Okay. So I, I, I lived with my grandparents when I was in high school. So all the, and, you know, the traditional sort of all the kids come from California during the summer vacation. You spend okay. I grew up in that kind of a family. Okay. Right? Um, and so I was the old, one of the older grandkids. So when I was in high school, let's say there was a slew of three or four of them who were elementary school, and they were coming the summertime. Okay. Yeah, bugging me, bugging the grandpas, love them, love them to death. But they would get up in the morning, and the first thing that would happen was the grand, my grandmother would say, okay, go on out there and get your switch for the day. Go get your switch. <laughs> and um, I, and it, it tickles me to death to, to this day. She, and she would tell me, she, would, she and I was the older, I was the one who was there. I had already been through that. I, right? I, knew, I, knew, the, I knew the line, right? And she would tell me and, uh, and my grandfather, because he would he was notorious as well. It's like I don't want neither of you to be laughing when I'm telling you. I don't okay. want to hear you laugh. <laughs> don't you don't you sit there and mess us up. And they get you get you see these you see these two little girls. It was two two girl cousins. Every morning they would get up. Well, I don't want to get a switch. I don't want to get a switch. Get a switch. They'd go out there and get their little switch. She put them over there, you know, by the air conditioners. You're like, you, that's for you in case you you know what's going to happen. Start. <laughs> Never had to use them. Never had to use them, right? <laughs> Never had to. Use. I kind of want to try to start. I think Zach is going to require. Zach is going to require that. My father, my father used to have. My mother would tell me. My father used to hang his belts up on the wall. <laughs> exactly. And she said, "Which one am I going to tell your dad to use on you?" Exactly. He exactly. never, never touched me once, but just look at those little <laughs> was enough. Exactly. Enough to know. Exactly. And it's interesting how they yeah. raise this. They use the threat of, well, I always say that people do things for one or two reasons. To avoid pain yeah. or to gain pleasure. Yeah. So, so that was avoiding pain. <laughs> exactly. So little Zach. No, he's yeah. something. He's just feeling his oats. He's good. Yeah. He's good, yeah. but he's most definitely focused. Yeah. And, and it's an mm-hmm. interesting contrast because he... Um, as I mentioned, my, my sister and I are five years apart. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister looks like my mom more so. I look like my dad more so. Isn't that interesting? He, Zach is, is definitely more like her. <laughs> and Noah's, Noah's in some ways like me. Yeah. How does your wife deal with them? How does she deal with them? Because you, you said you yeah. you talk to them and you do this. You've never you've never been physical except other than picking them up. Yeah. And letting them know when you pick them up. Exactly. You don't want any more of this. Exactly. 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 Like. Don't make know. me go another step. Exactly. And they get yeah, it. Yeah. That, that, I think I think she is. You know. Um, I, I have visited her where she's from, and she's from a very small island. You know. Um, and you know, so so the traditional Japanese yinaka, right? What we call right, and her parents are salt of the earth types, right? She's very much out of, kind of that, and, okay. and you know, and, and and so she will she'll get on, she'll get on them in a minute, you know, verbally, she, verbally, she, verbally, verbally. She never, she's not physical never, with them. No, she's not physical. Never. No. No. Okay. Yeah. And, will and, she grab them or anything if they start going no, crazy? No, I'm probably the one that's that more has to likely catch to grab them, right? I mean, I, well, I, she just lets them go and figures. Okay, they're figured out. Correct. Or I mean, I think, but she she probably stays on them more than I. You know, that sort of yeah, yeah. That that she stays on them more. But if I but if I get if I get upset, then we know everything is kind of come to bubbling point. up, right? right? Right. So so I think she's more she's more the constant in terms of keeping them in line. You know, yeah. I would say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But who has more time with them? Because of course, I mean, as a mother, she, mm-hmm. you, you always assume yeah. the mother's going to have yeah. more time, yeah. especially when they're young. Yeah, yeah. But does she have more time, or do you feel like, yeah. because both of you are working, too. The, the interesting thing about that, I would say, she probably still has more time in some respects, but I, the, the one benefit of this whole COVID thing is that I've had more time with them. Isn't that good? Day to day. You know, I mean, I, I've, I've changed, right? There's certain, I mean, the idea of, well, I still work probably as much time, as much as I did before, do it in a different way, and I'm always home pretty much when they go to sleep. I'm always there, not always, but most of the time there when they're having dinner, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, so I, I think their the, the exposure to me is, is is definitely 
broadened as a result of COVID. Have you felt? Right? Have you felt it? Have that you that felt it? Yeah. Yeah. What's about, what about your What about your relationship with your wife? Has that changed any now that you guys are having to look at each other every, every day? Yeah. She's home too, right? <laughs> She's home as well. Though. Yeah, I think you guys you know, are you sure you to do this? Uh, again, I don't probably say it enough. Hopefully, she sees it. I, I have I have even more appreciation for her than I did before, right? Um, I'm, I'm I think the thing that I'm and it's this is just where we are in our careers and the sacrifices she's made and having children and stopping work and going back and doing that kind of a thing, right? I have more definitely have a, you know even more respect for her now mm -hmm. I see as we go forward while I'm gonna continue to, to really grind and work and do great hopefully do good things I want to make sure I I will probably have more flexibility than she will in some respects That's and I'm gonna keep that yeah, yeah I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go back to to, to to all I was before I'm gonna make sure that that I keep that and that she has a bit That's more good. who's she working more, with who's she working with she's with the more no more security yes Wow. Exactly. Is her job similar to yours? Or she's no, she's she's on she's on a different different part of it. Part she, of I mean, it. I do the international tax thing. She's she's more uh, doing more business support related stuff there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Maybe yeah. I should get her on here too and ask yeah. her about that. That's interesting. Yeah, that, yeah. That's so good. See, I haven't had a husband and wife yet. See what but I'm thinking about yeah. doing that. No, I have you both together. You're sitting there and say, okay, would you tell them? <laughs> find out exactly, the truth. Exactly. Exactly. Look, if you could, if people wanted to contact you, how would they go about contacting? Um, I think because the easiest way to contact me, well, you know, is probably LinkedIn. LinkedIn, okay. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm, I'm I'm pretty active in it in terms mm -hmm. of professionally, and yeah. then also, I mean, I think Facebook is much more about you know uh, communities, yeah, right. you know, family and etc. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm open to to anyone sort of reaching out to me. On reaching out, yeah, yeah, because I'm sure yeah. some people will, and they may not even be in Japan. Yeah. You know, because this internet goes everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. So they look under Samuel L. Gordon. Oh, uh, Samuel, just Samuel, Samuel Gordon. Samuel Gordon. Yeah. And yeah. the gun. They come to you that way. And yeah. Yeah. Man, same I'll haircut. Tell you. Picture with the same, same haircut. Yeah, I like yours. That's a new style. That's a, you know, I'll when did you when did you start that? When did you start doing that? You know how? I'll, I'll tell you. Because you did. Because I remember you were keeping it for a while. And you said eventually you're going to take it all off. You told me that. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. Right? Okay. The the first time I did it, well, first of all, I was I was a, I was a basketball player, right? And, and growing up. Um, and so that's the sport where, you know, at that, that time, you know, everybody kept their hair short. So I knew what it looked like. All right. Okay. I was never, it was never. But the interesting thing about it was um, the 1994, I'm preparing to move to Japan. So I have a, I kind of wound up my job, I've got a month and a half, kind of just to kind of do what I want to do. And, you know, before I moved to Japan and sitting over at a friend's house watching the NBA finals. Houston Rockets versus the New York Knicks. His girlfriend was there, and she's like, look, I'm going to leave you guys. I'm going to go do something, whatever. You guys enjoy the game. And he and I are sitting there, you know, on the couch, just watching TV. And he's like, well, what? you got to move to Japan. And there's a bit of a back and forth. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to try. Well, what you going to do? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm moving to Japan. I'm moving there. He's like, no, how, what, they, what you going to do about your hair? And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And he was like, you know, I ain't to cut black people hair. <laughs> <laughs> in Japan, I'm like, I was like, I was like, I'll cut this stuff off. Yeah. I ain't worried about this. Yeah. Like, no, you won't. Yeah. Like, yeah, I will. No, you won't. Long story short, she comes home. We're in the kitchen. He's shaving my hair off. He's shaving off right <laughs> in there. In the kitchen. And she just looks at us like, I yeah. cannot leave you guys. Hello, Virgin. You're getting into something. Without you doing something stupid. And so that was it. That was basically it, it right? Yeah. And you kept it. I've grown it back once or twice, right? Yeah. But I, I pretty yeah. much kept it. Yeah. Well, I can tell you my story about doing that once. I was betting someone in one of our programs, our summer sessions, a little girl that, if, I said, if she got her back hands or something, I cut my hair off. Right. At lunchtime. Right. She did it. <laughs> I went home, shaved my hair. Yeah. So I come back home. My son's daddy, daddy, do us, do us, do us. So we went in the bathroom, took the video out there, and did half of the hair. <laughs> stuff, took it all off. Right. So I had four little bald-headed boys in the tub and took the thing. And they used to have this little Japanese song about that dongo, <laughs> little foreheads. Right. I asked my wife the next morning when I wake it up, and she'd seen it. And she didn't say anything. She came in, she saw her hair, and she saw the boy, and she looked at it. And I said, what do you think about it? She said, um, you, I don't mind, but you did our four sons. And I said, I said, wait, when I, I woke up that morning, I said, I said, but you've never been kissed by a bald headed man. She said, I never will be. And I said, you don't like it? She said, no. And I said, but all the women at Tack are saying they like it. They're not married to you. 
<laughs> and I came and asked some of the women what mm. they thought about it. Right. And they said, we're not married to you. Right. <laughs> they didn't like it. They thought it looked they didn't like my hair like this. <laughs> well, listen, I want to thank you for taking the time to, to talk. Is anything you like to anything you'd like to add or, or leave this with? I, I would just say, um, I don't know how many people listen to this. I would just say, I would just, and I don't know uh, how many, I don't know what people have said before. I would just want to say one thing. I would like to thank you mm -hmm. for um, something that you've done the whole time you've been here for us and the us being that community I mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. You've always been kind of representative of something very valuable to us. We've always mm -hmm. looked to you and aspired to, to things that you've done mm -hmm. and you've offered us that, that sort of sight to, to, to a life here, mm -hmm. right? So I appreciate that and um, you know, um, I, the only other thing I'd say is that we look forward to eventually getting Zachy back into one of your classes so that boy can have something to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna put him on me. Now you're gonna put exactly, him on me. Exactly. <laughs> so the other boy have something to do. Um, I think that's it. All right. Yeah. I want to thank all of you for watching this podcast. Make sure that you press like, subscribe, and also leave a comment. And remember, it's all on loan, and continue to reach for the stars.